must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey and thanks for listening. Are you a third-year physical therapy student that excels on tests when you have study guides, checklists, and deadlines? With all of the information available about how to prepare for the NPTE, it's easy to get disorganized and not feel prepared going into the big day. NPTE Prep Success is an online course that provides PT students easy-to-use study guides and step-by-step guidance through the NPTE preparation. To learn more, visit kylericeprep.com. Thank you again all for your continued support. And now for the show. Yeah, and 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 Gunter, I want to kind of go back a little bit and kind of go back to the education component because I know with your experience teaching this stuff, you know, regarding lymphedema and swelling management and all the other things that you do, what have you learned about doing this successfully since your time as the beginning? Like, what have you learned that seems to work well versus what doesn't seem to work well? Well, I think we we are giving people a, a skill set that is not been taught in their basic training, and um, now once we are finished in our training, um, it really depends on the practitioner on how they process the information and then actually run with it. Um, I. I I know a lot of people from like 20, 25 years ago. We have trained a long, long time ago. And they have been now converting their whole practice, uh, whether they are hospital-based or in private practice, um, you know, to lymphedema because it's such a rewarding work. But it really depends on how you're processing the information that we give you in the initial training. and if you have an interest in helping patients with that chronic swelling, you will do extremely well. Um, but much of what we teach is then dependent on how is a person processing the information, how they are building on their skill set, because we can give them the initial skill set in our training. And I do believe we prepare them very, very well for the work out there in the field. but. Eventually, we have to recognize that what we do is we just give them the basics and they need to then, um, you know, build up on that. And maybe that leads into another component of training, and that is a time element. People think that our training is very long, and by comparison, we teach practically the lymphedema certification course is a continued education course. And by comparison, a um, 135 hour long course is very long. However, given what we are teaching therapists, um, not only the manual lymph drainage and the compression therapy, but the whole background on edema management and the different types of edemas and then cancer-related edema versus multifactorial edema, obesity plays a role. So we give them a lot of information and when the person comes finally comes for the training, they say, oh, now I understand why the training has to be 135 hours long. Uh, to ease the pain a little bit, um, we actually do 45 hours online. So people will do a 45-hour home study, and they have to do certain quizzes to show us that they actually completed the home study and understood the materials. And then they come for the next 90 hours uh, that would be an in-classroom training over a nine-day period. And that, in my opinion, is really the minimal amount of time anyone should spend um, in their education when they want to treat uh, patients with lymphedema. Um, I would rather expand that to a few more days if I could, um, but I would not be able to take any, any time away from that training because it is truly a comprehensive training and materials that are not necessarily conveyed into it in anyone's um, basic um, 
college education. Um, so um, I think we, we, we make it as easy as possible, but, but it does take a commitment to come for the, for the training. And once you leave our training, and many people don't know what to do with that, when I say that at the end of each training, I say, you know, you're leaving us now with a completely different skill set, but you also are a completely different therapist that than the one you were when you first uh, signed up for the training and most people after a couple of years they agree and they said oh yeah wow it changed my entire practice not only for lymphedema but also for everything everything they do well, yeah and, and that kind of prompts one last follow-up to that Gunter, because obviously you saying those kind of those next steps um following and you kind of broke down a little bit about what the program entailed but say, for example, a clinician's out there and they've gone through the program and they kind of want to look into other resources to continue to help. Um, from, your, from both your guys' standpoints, what other helpful resources exist out there um, for clinicians looking to help patients with persistent swelling and lymphedema for maybe a further reference list? There is so much out there. It's just <laughs> that people oftentimes don't know what their resources really are. For any trained therapist or even like someone who has not been formally trained in lymphedema but interested in more information the lymphatic education and research network it's online i think it's lymphatic net lymphnet.org i don't know uh their website yeah, lymphnet.org but they have a symposium series which is free for anyone similar to the podcast here. You can actually go on the computer and they have their live streams archived on their website. And that is in itself more than 40 hours of continued education at your fingertips by highly skilled experts in the field of lymphedema. So the Lymphatic Education and Research Foundation's website is really a resource for information. Um, they also have live streams um, from symposiums that they organized in conjunction with Harvard Medical School. I mean, it's such a vast amount of information on their, on their website that is accessible 24 hours a day, no cost to the person watching. It just, you have to know that it's there. Um, the other opportunities are just this year, we have um, three national conferences on lymphedema therapy here in this country. One we just completed here in Denver two weeks ago. Now there's another one coming up in Chicago from the International Lymphedema Framework um, in June. And then there is yet another conference on lymphedema and swelling management in October by put on by the National Lymphedema Network. There's such big resources. Uh, our neighbors to the north, the Canadians, do a wonderful conference every two years. Anyone interested in lymphedema or swelling management should also look across the border and see um, what they can learn there. And I think I could send you a whole list of different resources that people could utilize to get a more information on edema and edema management, and particularly for those ones who are trained already and certified, they can continue their education, build on their skill set by just listening and watching some of these archived live streams. I mean, it's, it's an invaluable resource that the Lymphatic Education and Research Network puts on there. Well, fantastic. And if you guys are listening, go ahead and scroll down and all those resources that they had kind of mentioned will be there. So if you guys want to check them out, please feel free because they're there for you guys. And, you know, guys, I appreciate both of your guys' perspectives on persistent swelling because I feel like I've learned a lot in this past hour on aspects of this that I really hadn't known before. So first and foremost, thank you both for your time and what you've been able to share. And I know other listeners would find this valuable as well. Um, but since our podcast is called the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, we always finish up with this last question to everyone because we want to kind of get at other solutions to help education. So the question is, if you could change one aspect of healthcare education, um, now whether that be physical therapy, licensed massage therapy, or other healthcare provider related, which aspect would you change and how would you change it? Well, I think, um, oh. go ahead, Kristen. <laughs> okay. I think 
that um, it's always baffled my mind that nurses are not typically educated in these principles. Um, so I would love to see better integration of these concepts into nursing education, as well as um, in terms of our PT education, I think when we learn about wound care, it, these, these um, principles of the short stretch wrapping should be presented in in the education um, of wound, wound care, wound management in acute and long-term care settings. I think that, um, you know, I, I think that the, the amount that is taught could be expanded a little bit in that undergraduate um, setting, or sorry, in the graduate, in the graduate setting in the DPT program. Um, but I also think, you know, somehow, improving the access to courses like Gunter's for people um, so that it, I, I, I feel like a lot more is needed and there's a lot of patients and not a lot of trained therapists. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we, you know, how, how do we provide maybe more baseline awareness in, in some of these settings um, and collaboration with, with nursing um, and PT and OT and who's ever seen these patients with persistent swelling. And then also how do we improve, um, you know, access to therapists to get formal training as well. Yeah. And I think I would actually like to go back to a time where therapists are given more time for continued education. Their continued education budgets have been slashed over the years. Some people in rehab therapy are expected to do the right thing and to do the most, you know, up-to-date treatment modalities, but they are not giving the time and the resources. So if I had my way, I would give them more time for continued education, put in more money, um, into their budget for continued education and then also make them understand that people who are coming for continued education that it takes time and that they need to invest that time and then um, they will be better skilled clinicians down the road but I think the lack of resources for therapists in terms of um, continue, continue education money and time uh, needs to be addressed because we expect them to do a good job and provide the most up-to-date therapy. We also need to give them the time and the resources. Completely yeah, no, agree. Yeah, and those are some really good answers, guys, because I know, and I always love it now because it's funny, as we first started doing this, we kind of got some very similar answers at the end. So we've definitely picked up on some themes, and I love it now that we're getting different answers that maybe you're outside of that. So I always love getting those different answers to this question. Well, guys, I recognize, of course, that other people listening might have follow-up questions for you guys, or maybe just want to reach out if they want to learn a little bit more. Um, where could people reach out and re reach out to you guys if they have kind of a question or just wanted to follow up on what was talked about today? I mean, for me, it's really easy. Uh, if you put my name <laughs> into Google, <laughs> there will be a lot of stuff coming up and you will find me here in Colorado. I mean, I'm, I don't mind if you share my email address, which is Grinter, G-U-E-N-T-E-R at closetraining.com. Um, and um, I'm committed to getting back to everyone. It may not be the same day, but uh, if you give me a day or two, I will actually um, answer your email and, um, and the rest is on our website at closetraining.com. And mine, uh, my website is www.evoke-physio.com and my uh, email address is Kristen, K R I S. T E N dot Carlin, C A R L I N at gmail dot com. Well, perfect. Both perfect to both you guys. And thank you again so much for your time, insight. I hope you guys keep crushing it with what you guys are doing. And thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having us. Access to healthcare is one of the largest issues facing both providers and patients, as millions of people worldwide lack timely and affordable access to healthcare. Anywhere healthcare. A telehealth platform is a simple, low-cost option for providers and patients that eliminates the barriers to access to all kinds of healthcare. 
To find out more, check out anywhere.healthcare, which is available on our show notes. And if you use the code HET in all caps when you email to sign up, you'll save 25% off the total cost. Thank you for attending class today, and we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.